14th August 2020. No Barcelona fan can ever forget this date. The Barcelona team which boasted the likes of Gerard Piquet, Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, Arturo Vidal, Luis Suarez and most importantly Lionel Messi suffered the club's most embarrassing defeat in recent memory. This is humiliation. This for a club of that status. 8-2 was the scoreline and the man sat across Kike Setien at the opposite dugout was none other than Hansi Flick. Barcelona have announced Hansi Flick as their new head coach. Uh, on their website, they say they've reached an agreement for the German to become men's first team coach. It so happened that over four years after leading his Bayern Munich Warriors to destroy what remained of a crumbling Barcelona dynasty. The last two years were embarrassing for Barcelona, beaten by Roma. 3 nothing. The 4 1 up in the first leg, and they're beaten 4 4. Beaten last year by Liverpool from 3 nothing up 4. He has done the same to the club he once led, this time with the one he helped destroy. Uh, we're Barcelona, uh, we're playing in our football ground. We knew that we had to win here, and that's how it went. Days after slaying the Bavarian Giants in the biggest game in world football, the Madrid Giants, their eternal rivals, had nowhere to run. A stunning performance from Barcelona, who have hammered Real Madrid 4-0 to go six points clear of their great rivals at the top of La Liga. Hansi Flick has turned Barcelona into a legit nightmare, not just by winning matches and playing better than they did last season, but by doing it in typical Flick fashion, by scoring lots and lots of goals. For a club which has had several ups and downs over the last few years, there isn't much indication that this particular up will become a down very soon. While yes, the team is doing well and playing amazing football, there has been a handful of examples where teams get revitalized and experience an uptick in performance due to the arrival of a new manager only to crumble in the end. When somebody new comes in, things change because everybody does it not a completely different way but a slightly different way. And when you start off the season the way Barcelona have started, then in your mind, particularly the younger guys, it's about the changes. We weren't doing this last year. Right. Or the previous manager, we weren't doing this. While a lot of examples could be extracted from other major football clubs around Europe, one need not look far but to Barcelona itself to see that this was already experienced by the former manager. And with very little changes made to the squad in terms of personnel, could we perhaps entertain the possibility that this might be short-lived or is there anything special about what Flick is doing that would yield long-term benefits for the Catalan giants? I won some titles with Bayern Munich and my hunger is really big for titles and I would like to to stay on this path with Barcelona and uh, I think we can achieve a lot together and this is this is the important thing. This is how Hansi Flick transformed Barcelona. Most of us are already aware of the story by now. Barcelona, one of the biggest clubs in the world and home to the brightest young superstars, legendary players and iconic figures of the game, suddenly experienced a massive financial disaster during the pandemic years. After recording the generation of record revenue figures, their financial crisis on the surface may have seemed sudden but upon closer inspection to how the club was run and how their economics and finances were structured and handled, one could have easily determined that this was a fragile system that would be incapable of handling massive crisis. While the club could not have foreseen a global pandemic even in their wildest imagination, the slim chance that it happened was enough to throw them into massive financial disarray. Other clubs, by virtue of being run better, built more resistance to the effects of the pandemic than Barcelona. To make matters even worse, on the pitch, the club was subjected to its most humiliating defeat in recent memory as Bayern Munich, then managed by Hansi Flick, thrashed them 8-2 in a Champions League quarterfinal tie that would otherwise have been two legs if it wasn't for the overall situation at the time. This was a horrible period for the club and naturally, the man at the helm was held responsible. At the fact that he had lost even the greatest player in the club's history, one club man Lionel Messi to the point of the Argentinian wanting to leave was a major cause for alarm. The current president Juan Laporta capitalized on this and centered his entire campaign around the possibility of Messi staying. But by the summer of 2021, it unfortunately did not happen. Ronald Koeman, who was brought in to steady the ship, was out soon after, replaced by Xavi, who momentarily brought hope to the side by choosing to rejuvenate aspects of the club's culture which was gradually eroded since the beginning of the post-Guardiola years. Depending on who you ask, Xavi's time 
was a mixed bag of exciting moments and down bad ones. There was the highs of winning La Liga in his first full season and then the lows of the team being knocked out of the Champions League. In fact, after winning La Liga and the Supercopa in 2022-23, there was much optimism going into last season. However, things went horribly wrong. Under his stewardship, the team finished trophyless. By January 2024, Xavi announced his intent of leaving the club following their failure to reach the dazzling heights of the previous league winning season. Undoubtedly a hard decision to make, Xavi stated that a toxic situation at the club was having a negative effect on his mental health. These days, Xavi feels isolated. He lost authority when directors Matteo Alemani and Jordi Cruyff, allies with whom he had a very good relationship, were taken away from him in the summer and in came Deco, closer to the president's way of of thinking. It has been said Deco shares misgivings regarding Xavi's ability to do the job and is not afraid to state them privately. But when he meets the manager and they're both next to the president, the support for Xavi is unanimous. Laporta even hopes he can change his mind to remain in the post longer, or so he tells the manager. Laporta had reportedly been meddling in Xavi's affairs, sometimes directly overruling his manager's decision. One example of this was in December 2023. Barca had already qualified for the knockout stages of the Champions League, so Xavi picked a weakened squad for the trip to Royal Antwerp. Key players like Ronald Araujo, Robert Lewandowski, Frankie de Jong, and Ilkay Gundogan were set to be left at home to be rested. But at the last second, Laporta overruled his coach Araujo, Lewandowski, and Gundogan traveled with the team on the president's demand. Barca, regardless, lost 3-2. Now back to the issue of Deco, apparently Xavi wanted Real Sociedad's Martin Zubimendi as the replacement for the departing midfield veteran Sergio Busquets. The central midfield was a very important role and had to be filled, with the club even being linked with the likes of Bayern Munich's Joshua Kimmich. Whenever players like Kimmich were brought up, concerns were immediately raised over the club's ability to bring him considering their financial situation. Imagine all this going down and then the sporting director decided to bring in a forward, forcing the club to turn to Southampton's Oreo Romeo to fill Busquets shoes. They also didn't end well for Vitor Rock. After not getting the amount of game time he wanted, he was immediately loaned out to Real Betis just months after he signed. At the end of April, after the team's performance had improved, both domestically and in Europe, Laporta was said to have summoned Xavi and the Barcelona board for dinner, where the parties agreed that the manager should stay on, even if this season was to end without any silverware. The pair, along with Deco, held a press conference and posed for photographs as a show of solidarity that ran through the club. On Wednesday, Wednesday, May 15th, however, everything went wrong. When asked to offer a message of support to the fans during a press conference, Xavi opted instead to talk about the club's crippling finances. The Barcelona fans need to understand we are in a difficult situation, especially on the economic side. Our financial situation is not the same as 20 years ago when the club manager could say, I want to sign this player, this player, and this player, and we got them all. The fans have to realize we need to adjust to this. I am doing it, and we will do it together as a club. That does not mean we won't compete. We will try our best. This did not sit well with the president. Laporta reportedly felt betrayed by the coach because a few days before, the coach had told him the opposite, that he had confidence in the squad and that they could compete for the titles. This misunderstanding, among many other factors, would lead to Xavi's termination. And then came Hansi Flick. Barcelona have announced Hansi Flick as their new head coach. Uh, on their website, they say they've reached an agreement for the German to become men's first team coach until the 30th of June 2026. While Flick may be credited for inflicting an immeasurable amount of trauma on Barcelona as a club, the profile of the Hansi Flick that beat them in 2020 was not the same as a profile of the Hansi Flick they hired in 2024. Since that legendary 8-2 win over Barcelona, he since left the Bayern job to take over as the manager of Germany replacing his former boss Joachim Lov after the Euros, which took place in 2021 ahead of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. As every manager who has ever managed at both club and international level will tell you, managing at club level is very different from managing at international level. Following Germany's disastrous World Cup campaign during which they suffered an embarrassing group stage elimination, the seat at the German dugout was getting very hot. And soon, by September 2023, Flick was out the door. German FA has decided following a board meeting that national coach Hansi Flick as well as his two assistant coaches Marcus Sorgand and Danny Roll are relieved from their duties with immediate effect when the shock results the weekend, albeit in a friendly with Japan winning 4-1 against Germany last night. Nevertheless, that failure never truly decreased his stock at all. He was still coveted all over Europe. No one can forget so soon how much of a monster he turned Bayern Munich into. Robert Lewandowski almost won the Ballon d'Or under his tutelage. I think it's central, fundamental to everything that they do. If you think of that back four, 
is like a piston that just applies the pressure and allows the front six to go to work. At Bayern, Flick employed an aggressive pressing game with a front quartet in a 4-2-3-1 formation, pushing high up the pitch to close down the opposing goalkeeper and defenders. The midfielder and Bayern's own defense will also squeeze forward, limiting the room and forcing mistakes, which were then immediately pounced upon at speed. Playing with a high back line has been a feature of our game because by doing that, we don't allow the opposition any space, Flick said ahead of the 2019-20 UEFA Champions League final. Obviously, that means the gap between our defense and our goal is pretty big but the important thing is that we put pressure on the ball it's important that we cover the ground when a ball is played in and it's important that we close down the passing channels over the last 10 months we've implemented our philosophy in our game and have pressed the opposition that's been our guarantee for success flick was able to deliver success for bayern in a relatively short period of time part of Niko kovac coaching staff assistant coach to be precise flick was appointed to lead bayern as his replacement in november 2019 it seemed to most that the Bavarian Giants gave the job to a novice. But Flake was far from one. He was once a player at Bayern Munich who made 104 appearances in midfield between 1985 and 1990, winning the Bundesliga four times. He was the assistant of Joachim Lowe, was the sporting director of the DFB, the German Football Association, and the managing director of Offenheim. He said in one of his earliest interviews after joining Barcelona, we won some titles with Bayern Munich and my hunger is really big for titles. I won some titles with Bayern Munich and my hunger is, is really is really big for titles and uh, I would like to to stay on this path with Barcelona and uh, I think we can we can uh, achieve a lot together. Flick seems to be getting things right. Laporta likes him as a manager, even attempts to bring him to the club while he was considering sacking Ronald Koeman. But Flick's role as Germany manager, a role he recently accepted at the time, got in the way of this with the German politely declining the president's offer. Among many others, one of Barcelona's major source of revenue, club primed to generate over 100 million euros if they make it to the final. Also, winning performances encourage the fans to spend more on merchandise and so on. Barcelona has one of uh, of the best academy in the world, and uh, they have a mixed, good mix between experienced player and also um, and also the young talent player. And I think we have we have to improve them that they can improve. And this is our job to work together with with Deco, with uh, the president Laporta. It's for me, it's very important the teamwork. In Barcelona, he inherited a squad filled with several gems, homegrown gems, I might add, in the likes of new superstar Lamine Yamal, Pablo Gavi, Pau Kubasi, Alex Balde, and although not homegrown, but nonetheless in the category of Barca's brightest future prospect, Pedri Gonzalez. Mix them with the likes of new signing Dani Olmo, Ronald Arojo, veteran striker, a player flick worked with at Bayern Munich, Robert Lewandowski, Rafinha, experienced players to guide the youth, you have a recipe for a super team. Flake has been identified by Laporta as the right man to lead it. The philosophy uh, they have, it's, uh, it's similar like mine, so ball possession and, and really attacking football, these are the things uh, I love. As similar as uh, like, like Barca did because this is also my, my goal uh, from the first team that I, that I coach. And I want to play like uh, you know. I, I study a lot of uh, a lot of things about uh, the Netherlands football school, and and uh, this also Johan Cruyff uh, when I when I start for that. And this was my first step as as to be a coach, and uh, and uh, so I follow them. And um, this is uh, the idea how they want to play offense. We have to help the players. And there is the fact that he has accepted the club's awkward financial situation, refused to complain when the club could not register new signing Dani Olmo early, and has said all the right things about La Masia, the club's youth academy. Barcelona has one of the of the best academy in the world. On the latter, it helps that he's backed up such words with actions by starting three 17-year-olds in the opening three games of the season. I see a lot of intensity in training. When I spoke with Julio, he told me they were using different methods now. The exercise in training are really dynamic. A lot of strength work. We have a coach that wants to press until the 90th minute and the fitness staff are happy with the results they're achieving. From Flick, we demand that he works hard, is professional, intense and gives us the style of football we like. The president said when asked about expectations, he's laying the foundations to achieve the objectives we set ourselves, but we have not set out to any specific trophy. What Flick wants is what we want. Such encouraging words from the higher-ups early on is very important as this would lay the foundation for what will become of their relationship. We start though with a stunning performance from Barcelona. 
who have hammered Real Madrid 4-0 to go six points clear of their great rivals at the top of La Liga. It's all Hansi Flick at the moment. His team has been a joy to watch. The rhythm, flow, coordination, everything at the moment is top-notch. Notable wins they picked up includes their 7-0 thrashing of Real Valladolid, the 5-1 wins against Villarreal and Sevilla, and the recent headline makers, the 4-1 thrashing of his former club Bayern Munich, and the 4-0 decimation of eternal rivals Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. Not many saw this coming. He's happy living in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, it's Hansi Flick's loving. Oh, it's, like, the weather's great, you know, the team's playing great, everybody loves him and he's enjoying it, his players are enjoying it. You know, I, I said it before, I'm, I'm really happy for the fans, for the fans because uh, they deserved it and, and also like they support us and in the last weeks uh, was, was really great. The connections, again, the connections uh, between the players, the team, um, and also the supporters uh, and the club, it's, 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 it's really great. Life is good for Barca. The players are playing well, the young players are developing at a steady rate, especially Lamin Yamal, who just keeps on proving that he can handle the big leagues, getting even more comfortable on the pitch with every passing game. One of the major points of focus during Xavi's tenure was a solution to the big Busquets-shaped hole in the midfield. Flick had even more problems on his hand due to the summer exits of Oreo Romeo, Sergio Roberto and Ilkay Gundogan, leaving him with very very limited options in midfield. Briefly, Marc Bernal from Barcelona Athletic occupied that role and was excelling tremendously before unfortunately suffering a season-ending injury. As part of his impressive ability to adapt, Flick decided not to dwell too much on having the perfect player in there and changed his approach to focus on who can support the player there and how can he lessen the burden in the Busquets role. High pressure leading to fewer defensive transitions in the start and then there's Pedri who drops into deep midfield to orchestrate play and take attention away from whoever happens to be playing there on any given day. What's remarkable about Flick's Barcelona is how quickly they adapt to different situations. If an opponent dares to press high, Pedri drops deeper helping the team bypass the press with quick intricate combinations. This has often involved Dani Omo whose composure under pressure is invaluable. Before the opposition even realizes what happened, Barcelona has moved the ball through the lines and the press seemed like such a threat moments earlier is rendered useless. But for all the focus on what Barcelona does with the ball, it is what they do without it that truly separates great teams from merely good ones. On the flick, Barcelona presses intelligently using their forwards and midfielders to suffocate the opposition's build-up. Pressing is often very nightmarish for opposition players. It's central, fundamental to everything that they do. If you think of that back four as like a piston that just applies the pressure and allows the front six to go to work. Yamal, Rafinha, Olmo and Lewandowski are born to just wreak havoc in the attack. For Flick, football is about control, not through possession alone, but through the creation of unpredictable patterns of play that leaves opponents constantly second guessing. This begins with his high fullbacks. Rather than sticking to traditional wide roles, Flick asks his wingers, players like Rafinha and Lamin Yamal, to tuck inside and operate more centrally. In doing so, the width is then provided by the fullbacks. Andrew Balde on the left and Jules Koundé on the right. The brilliance of this approach lies in its fluidity. By narrowing the winger's positioning, Barcelona can flood the central space, creating a numerical overload that makes it incredibly difficult for opponents to defend against. Rafinha operating almost as a second striker is constantly darting into dangerous areas, pulling defenders with him and leaving space for others to exploit. Of course, Flick's style does not come without weaknesses. The high-line aggressive press leaves a lot of space in the back for opposition players to exploit, meaning the fullbacks have to be quick enough to cover those spaces. Flick's system is extremely vulnerable to very good counter-attacking teams. Teams that are very hard-working and industrious can force mistakes out of the defenders as seen during Germany's friendly match against Japan. For a team quite prone to injury crisis, a potential injury crisis can lead to the creation of many problems. Flick's game requires high energy and a long-term maintenance of fitness and performance levels. It also requires the players having a strong mentality which is something he is proving to be very excellent at. Flick helps us young players a lot. He's always on top of what we need and you appreciate that. When things have to be taken seriously though, he does have that element of sergeant about him. But he's as good as gold when he speaks with the players. He's really close to the players, someone who likes to talk with us. Apart from being serious, he always enjoys a joke. He's not always serious as he appears. Flick's ability to balance between being highly demanding and incredibly encouraging is very useful, especially to a squad full of young 
players in a system or club that will no doubt bring more of them in. His ability to communicate well with the players is at the heart of it. He is very good at maintaining balance, making clear of what he wants his players to do and also very open to receiving feedback from them. He has even got players who weren't doing well before firing left and right this season. Rafinha has now scored 11 goals in 15 matches this season. He has not only scored more goals than he did last season but he managed to do so in less than half of the total appearances he made. It's November and Barcelona are currently top of the table. At the same time when Real Madrid is struggling with a whole host of issues, one of which the headache of trying to integrate Kylian Mbappe into the team. For now, Flick is doing everything right but as some warn, he cannot get carried away by this honeymoon period. He knows that and he isn't complacent. He is well aware of the demanding nature of clubs like Barcelona. The team has to keep winning not just for financial reasons alone but so as to assert themselves as one of the big dogs in Europe which will also in turn benefit them financially. The financial issues has ensured that the club is heavily focused on the young players in the team and are trying to integrate more players from Namazia. It is also very important to not forget the role that Xavi played in all of this. He came into the club at a difficult time and helped set the foundations for the team Flick is currently building. Taking Barca to the top of the table despite the financial issues and the player injuries has proven Flick's resourcefulness once again. Hansi Flick has transformed Barcelona. Whether it will last or how successful it will be, only time can tell.